Okay, fellas, in the shop today. Fortunately, you guys have been buying my lures and stuff, and for that I'm grateful. Today I'm tying up some modern Mickey fans for a client and some uh, purple, pink and purple trolling flies. Uh, it always starts with this unit here. This uh, is a number two hook with a Dodger disc on there. I make those. And it starts with a trailer hook that is a number two hook with 50 pound monofilament with um, I'm now adding tinsel on that back hook to give it a little bit more shine and finish to it oh come on really this is held on with super glue and thread I think I'm eight, nine, ten. really the trolling flies is what really got me started in black warrior lures I don't do much casting. I didn't know JB Weld makes super glue, so I'm using JB Weld super glue. Two eight millimeter beads. Like that. Have to kind of measure where to cut the there we go. Oh, we cut that one off a little bit too much. I'm gonna come back a little. In fact, we're gonna come back a good ways. If it wasn't for super glue, I could not do this fly. It doesn't have to have touching turns on the way down, as we would say, but touching turns on the way up. Guys, this is basically a homemade um, crankbait. The thing is, is that big disc there makes it flip and flop about in the water and waggle just like a fish. Camp Stuka Bear's on duty. Every fly is inspected by Stuka Bear every process. He's the quality control officer, so. Rattle, yes, you can put a rattle, see. You can put a rattle in, in a, on a fly. Rattle fly, or whatever, whatever we're gonna call it, I don't know, just whatever, man. Can't ever put any weight on it because it gets so, um, it doesn't wanna stay on, it'll torque on you if you're not careful. Just to make sure there's good contact between that rattle and the um, and the hook and the and everything and the threads, all that kind of good stuff. Yarn, body material. Go to Walmart. Just you know, you can you tie probably thirty thousand flies with that. Wonder how much of your computer fan are you hearing? Because I had to turn the air off, <laughs> and it is getting. Hot. Okay. Modern Mickey fin. I, the, the Mickey fin is a long, it's one of the oldest bass flies out there. Streamers, what they call it, bass flies. It's, it's a classic. And this is sort of my take on it. And so I call it the modern Mickey fin. So the rattle forms the underbody. So I don't have to have, use as much of this stuff, the body material. That's just providing the color, but the structure is actually being provided by the, the rattle. I almost always use black thread now, and I just use embroidery thread. I don't even bother with anything else. I don't buy the special threads. Just embroidery thread, because embroidery thread looks good, and um, it has good strength, good enough to hold things together, so why not stick with it? About every year I update the materials I'm using. I used to use Crystal Flash with this. Now I'm using this um, just regular old tinsel. And for this particular fly, I'm using a holographic tinsel. You see that sort of rainbow effect it has in there, or whatever they want to call it. I don't, you know, again, I got this from Fly Tires Dungeon. Crystal Flash has all those twists in it, and that twists makes it hard to tie with because it doesn't want to lay flat and things and it just this is the hardest part I can't ever really do this without poking myself in the finger I think that's it there we go I tend to cut these fairly short like that just a little bit of flash on the bottom there sort of simulates scales things like that I have been using a lot of synthetic fibers, but I don't really like them anymore. And so we're going back, we're going to just true bucktails and various um, 
things. I'm using feathers and real hairs, things like that. Uh, they're easier to work with. The characteristic thing about the Mickey fin is the yellow, red, yellow. Another thing I love about the bucktail is not everything is uniform. Some fibers are short depending on the on where on the bucktail you where you take it from the actual tip or the stern of it. You see how that naturally flares up and out? I can never get the synthetic material to do that. It would always just drape over, always. Red. Okay. Now I got these bucktail, the colored bucktail here I got from Jan's Netcraft, which is a place where I buy a lot of components for rods and rod building. So there's that, yellow, red, and then uh, one more yellow. Okay. Here we go. Just a very vibrant. I've had crappie fishermen use these, bass fishermen use these. Um, you know, that, that color just seems to work and I don't know why. Let me show you how I do my whip finishes. A half hitch, a triple whip finish. One, two, three. And I try to tighten that up and get it, uh, and I usually do another half hitch, but that one broke off. Don't worry, because I always finish off with more super glue. Get it right there on those fibers. Right there on top of those fibers. Try to spread it out a little bit with the uh, bodkin here. And yeah, my bodkin is totally full of super glue. I make these out of the same material I make my corks with. And now for the final touch. Eyes. These are six millimeter eyes. Which are a little bit better for this application. And this super glue is more the gel type. Now the next thing is trying to get the eyes fairly symmetric so it doesn't look too and that, my friends, is a modern Mickey Finn. A lot of noise, the beads, the rattle. Water hits that, makes it, it'll spill off and just do all kinds of crazy, you know, erratic motions in the water. Flash, flash, vibrant colors. A lot of noise. Catches a lot of fish. What's the best view there? I don't know, maybe we just need to... Modern Mickey Finn. Check it out on the website. See ya.